It's telling. It's strut. It's telling. It's strut. It's telling. It's strut. It's telling. Fuck. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Um, well, you've seen the title of the video. Dan and I thought we'd start with some light-hearted japery. It is actually uh, the Monday before England goes into uh, its second lockdown. Mm. That's as much as we're going to say about that, other than we're going to record a few things, get it in the can so we can edit over lockdown and uh, still bring you the show. Indeed. Should we not dwell on that, Dan? Indeed. Let's, moving on. All right, so we've decided Strat versus Telly, and the premise of this is, um, well, Strat versus Telly. Uh, the Telecaster is Dan's guitar of choice, if you Indeed. could only have one. Indeed. Strat is my guitar of choice, if you could only have one. So we're gonna run you through five things each, uh, why we think Telly or Strat. Yes. And this will be interesting to uh, those of you who, A, either have both or one and are thinking about the other. Mm -hmm. Or indeed, if you play another kind of guitar and you're thinking about a single coil, classic single coil style Fender guitar, offsets notwithstanding, of course. Absolutely. This would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Heads or tails? Tails. You win. <laughs> you choose. Did you actually do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, both sides of my plectrum are the same, it's not going to work. <laughs> okay, I lose. Does that mean I've got to go first? No, no, you can choose. Yeah, you win, you choose. Oh, I see. Um, then you're going first. Okay, all right. So, my first thing about the Telecaster is how simple this thing is. It's basically, it's two bits of wood bolted on. There's no cutouts for your belly or for your arm. Um, you basically, your body twists into the shape around the Telecaster. But the funny thing is, with that simplicity, as soon as you try to add those sorts of things, it takes away a certain telliness. And with that simplicity comes stability, right? So, for example, um, doing string bends. If I do a, a string bend, I'm just gonna bend up to do the add nine up to the major thing. These two strings stay perfectly in tune. And it's also great if I'm playing a set and I break a string, the guitar doesn't go out of tune, well, hardly. You know, it's just a really rock solid, stable guitar. Um, when, before I got into tellies, I was playing strats. Mm. And I was doing a lot of this stuff. Yeah. You know, all my vibrato came from the um, tremolo from the, the wang bar. From the wang bar. And I remember that um, my strap was stolen and I had to grab a friend's guitar to do a gig that night and he, he gave me a telly. And I remember loving the sound of it, but I also remember thinking, man, um, I had no, you know, I had no vibrato. No, you know, and so, so I thought, wow. Well, because I, you relied on the bar. Because I relied on the bar so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. 
And I just remember thinking, I really should be able to do it all on this. Mm -hmm. So that's, for me, the most important thing. And all, all the other things that I love about the telly go from this. That simplicity and that stability means that, um, you know, I can develop, you know, my voice on the instrument to a point where, you know, it kind of, you know, my vibrato makes sense. I'm not relying on anything else, you yeah. know. Um, yeah, so that's my first thing is, okay. is simplicity and its stability. Now, of course, if you've got your strat set up in the traditional manner, what Dan just did with his string on string bends there becomes really difficult on a strat because as you bend the string up, the bridge bends down and mm. all the other strings detune. Now, I have my strat set up, so hopefully it won't do that. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea why I'm holding the guitar up here because it just makes it 10 times harder to play. But that is one advantage mm. uh, of being able to lock it flat. However, I agree with you that there is this um, big difference in how string bends feel under mm. the fingers when the bridge is locked there. Sure. So, all right, I'm going to change my order, Dan. Okay. Seeing as you're talking about that, my thing is... It's got a wobble bar for Christ's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> and who wouldn't want a wobble bar? Who, yeah, indeed. So, no massive trickery here. I have swapped guitars only because the trem arm isn't screwed into that one. Right. This one might do a bit of what you were saying. Still stays pretty, good. pretty solid, yep. um, but of course. What the f Very nice. Wang bar. Wang bar, um, very nice. There are people who believe that vintage strats cannot be set up for the wang bar to work. Right. I hope I've just proved that to be inaccurate. Did a full dive bomb on the low E. Comes back up. Comes back up, did a couple more whimmy whammies and uh, went back into the lovely uh, SRV chord there at the end. Wasn't the million miles out, was no, it? Now, sounds great. I dare say if you were Van Halening for too long, yeah, right. may he rest in peace. Um, then you will get a lot of uh, tuning sure. vagaries. But yeah, yeah. it is absolutely possible to set this thing. This is a vintage six-screw Fender-style vibrato. Mm -hmm. It's perfectly possible to use it and string on string bend and it stay in tune. Sure. No upbend. For those no, of you who like right. upbend, yep. that's the one thing you have to sacrifice. But right. It's got a whammy bar, man. It does indeed. Yeah. But like I said before, for me, I used it so much to a point where I hadn't really developed... Yeah. Other stuff, you yeah. know. Um, okay, so number one's done. My number two is nothing rocks <laughs> like the bridge pickup <laughs> on a Telecaster. So the, the bridge pickup is really interesting. It's, you know, it's just, um, you know, on an angle, it's quite wide, but it's also screwed into the metal um, bridge plate of the Tele. And it also has a brass plate on the bottom and it gives it a certain sound. And like I was saying before, the you know, everything I love about the Telecaster comes from a simplicity. So, you know, the strings through the body, um, giving it that, you know, it's such a solid thing. But but the bridge pickup, it's a big full frequency, but with plenty of bites. So when you do the big rock thing, so let's try this. <laughs> 
Right, so it is fat, but it has edge and dynamic to it, yeah. right? So when you hear guys like um, Albert Lee or guys like um, Roy Buchanan, mm -hmm. and they've got this, there's a, and such an attack, an edge yeah, yeah, yeah. to their playing, and it can only be the bridge pickup yep. on a Telecaster. Yep. So that when you, so that when they, you know, really hit it hard. It's a very, very special sound. I heartily concur. Having been sat next to that guitar for nearly five years now, no matter what guitar I play, whether it's P90s, whether it's a, a Les Paul or a um, 335 or something with pokey pickups, mm. nothing keeps up with that. Mm. And it, there is this great misconception about Telecasters that it is a weak guitar or a country guitar. Yeah. And it just couldn't be further from the truth. Is it? I mean, you think about where they've cropped up in rock over the years, whether it's Jimmy Page, the Georgia Satellites, to sure. Status Quo, to yeah. all the great telly players down the years. I, I, I actually agree with you. Nothing rocks like a telly. There's nothing like a telly on a bridge pickup. No. So I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. Um, my next one is... Uh, of course, what the strat gives you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. It's a, it's a gratuitous display of strats today. None less than this, which is a 1961 strat on loan from my friend Simon Green, for which I'm eternally grateful. And of course, what the strat gives you, which very few others, some other guitars, but very few other guitars, gives you, and no other guitars gives you in this way, is positions two and four. Yes. And yes. the interesting thing about positions four, for anyone who doesn't know, on a vintage style Strat, you've got three pickups, right? Three single coil pickups. And the selector switch here, sorry if this is first grade stuff, but we'll go over it anyway, is the neck pickup. That one's the middle pickup. That one is the bridge pickup. Mm -hmm. And when these guitars were original, that's all you had. Like that switch is. Three, yep. three positions. Yep. But somebody found, and I'll, I will demonstrate rather than explain, I don't even know who first discovered it or whether they discovered it at the factory and they told people. Mm. But what happens is when the two contacts of the um, the blade actually bridges them both in the switch and you get both pickups on, mm. which gives you all these lovely sounds. Now, of course, this is first grade stuff. Um, clean for chords and stuff. It's just... Let's have some delay, shall we? Take off the delay for a second. So it's just this amazing clean sound. And you've heard those in-between sounds all over all kinds of records. Shouldn't play too much of that for copyright reasons. But it is a palpably different experience in the two and four positions. Mm. I think the country guys really like it because it's in-between. It's a beautiful thing. And I'll just finish it off by saying, it's not just clean that it sounds really cool. Mm. 
So I'll go from, let's go from the middle pickup with a tube screamer. I'm playing really fast and loose with the uh, naughty other people's licks today. <laughs> um, but of course, dear old Johnny Boy is a massive fan of the in-between sounds. Sure. Clapton's used it extensively over the years. I mean, even with quite a fair bit of gain, KOT's got a lot on, has it, Dan? It's got a, it's got a reasonable amount on. Okay, let's see what happens. <laughs> Lovely. Not a sound that I use a million, with, with, with overdrive, I don't use the in-betweens very much. Right. But if you hear John Mayer, especially, he'll quite often be on two or four, mm. and then add a mid boost as well. To bring, to get that back, Because wow. one of the effects of the um, in-between position on a Strat is that it does scoop the mid range out a little bit. Mm. So then you step on something like a clon or a tube screamer to bring it back, and it is this very uniquely Strat sound. So there you go, clean and dirty, positions two and four, winner. Yeah, yeah, so uniquely Strat. Like there's yeah. no, there couldn't be any other guitar. Yeah, yeah really, really cool. Yeah, okay, yeah. right, my turn to swap. This is a uh, custom shop 1952 butterscotch thing of loveliness. So talking about the positions two and four and those clean sounds, can have a quick look at the neck pickup of a Telecaster. Yep. And it's, for me, I think it's the most underrated um, sound that the Telecaster has. Yep. You know, everyone knows about the bridge pickup thing. But the neck pickup for me, if I just add a little bit of reverb and delay. A uh, quick shout out to the um, Chase Bliss Stroke Meris CXM78 and also the Future Factory from Free the Tone, both of which have become mine and Dan's favourite reverb and delay of late, sounding not <laughs> least for your amazing playing, mate, but completely stellar. It's, yeah, yeah, I'm blown away. Yeah, yeah. So, inspiring, as yeah, we just found out. Yeah. So, it's a full frequency thing. But the chime and everything that's there is just divine. But the other, the other side of that, so let's just put on, you know, just, just a little bit of reverb, okay? Now, if I turn down the tone a little bit. You mean it makes you play all the wrong notes? It makes you play all <laughs> the wrong notes in all the wrong order. But the jazz yeah, it's tone, a, it's, 
from the neck pickup on a Telecaster is yeah. divine. Well, I mean, who can we think of? So guys like Bill Frizzell, Julian Lee, Ted Green. Ted, Ted Green's my favourite. So yeah, yeah. go and have a listen to Ted Green and, and the, the, you know some of the, the tones that he pulls out. And I think for me, because I'm sort of really interested in harmony and those sorts mm. of chords and stuff, and there is there's no substitute for that sound for me. So would you prefer that kind of stuff on that guitar to red? Uh, I think so. I think the the difference between um, the maple neck as opposed to the uh, the rosewood. There's a, the, this sounds a bit hollower Scoopier, in the mid range. In the mid range, definitely. And so for that sort of thing, yeah, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. Red in a rockier context when I need that that neck pickup tone, but with a bit more punch in the middle, yeah. is perfect. But for the for the cleans and the the jazzy stuff, you know. It, yeah, it really is a sound different bodywood as well, isn't it? Because this is ash and that's older. Exactly. For yeah. all of those people out there who don't believe that wood in guitars makes any difference, um, you can make your own minds up on that. But we're we're fully in the camp that believes that it does. There aren't, you go. Aren't yeah. we? Um, it's a beautiful sound, mate. What is? Do you know what that pickup is? I do. That is an analog man. Um, no way. Yeah. It was. What's he called? The I'm not sure. It's a pickup that he and he did a pickup set for somebody. The, the, uh, come Ray Anastasio. On. No, no. Jim Weeder. Jim Weeder. Yeah. So that's that pickup. Yeah. Sorry, I was just picking out people that I knew that Mike's really good friends with. Yeah. Yeah. It's magic. Yeah. Awesome. Very nice. Okay. Um, I got I got nothing to say to you on clean sounds, Dan. <laughs> okay. Not after that. So I'm going to rock it up a bit. Um, and say. The strats can rock. There are people out there who believe that only humbucker guitars can rock. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> regular viewers of the show will know that I have said many times that I'm about as rock as a tree. Yeah. Still a solid particle, I guess. However, I'm not averse to using a bit of gain. Indeed. Here and there. And I don't mean fuzz gain, I mean overdrive gain. Um, so. Lots of people think that the bridge pickup on a Strat is pretty weedy. Mm. This is a very simple um, demonstration of the fact that if you connect your tone control to that bridge pickup, you can roll off some of that weediness and have it sound pretty fat. So I'll, I'll let's see what sort of overdrive we can get going. Ace. Bit loud, bit loud, bit loud. Interesting with the KOT. So normally I'd have something like a Tube Screamer, Clon, Gladio, mm -hmm. DNM Drive. KOT's keeping everything really together. <laughs> normally what would happen that it will get a bit darker and right. thicker there. But anyway, just to say, you can use high gain with the strap if you uh, roll that bridge pickup off a little bit and s try and stay on top of it with the plane. How does the how does it normally come like wired? Uh, well, vintage style strats. Um, only have these two pickups connected to the two tone pots. Oh, so you have right. you have to move a wire to get the the bridge. Modern most modern strats come with it okay. attached, and also the value of the cap makes a big difference as well. This has got a 0. 0.047 cap, which is uh, I guess the second vintage. They were they were 0. The 0. 0.1 yeah. uh, to begin with. 0. 0.047 rolls off more upper mid frequencies, and if you go to a 0. 0.022. 
you'll only uh, wind off those really high frequencies. Mm -hmm. So if you want to use it for high gain, uh, a smaller cap can really help with that. But yeah, they, they can rock. They can rock. Yeah, yeah. Very and cool. If 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 my demonstration uh, doesn't quite work out, go and watch Envy Malmsteen or Richie Blackmore. There you go. <laughs> yeah, right. Yep. Okay, yeah, cool. So number four for me. Uh, we're talking about country guitar before. And I remember when I first heard... Actually, I remember when I first heard James Burton and the sound of his Telecaster, that Paisley Telecaster used to wear, uh, used to used to wear, used to play, used to wear very <laughs> I, I, well. I think wearing a guitar yeah, is fine. That's fine. Fine terminology, Dan. Um, and, and then you hear guys like, um, you know, like Vince Gill on his Telecaster. I mean, seriously awesome. Quick tangent. I was listening to the Eagles' latest live record. Right. Uh, the other night. And I hear this voice. I'm like, that is surely Vince Gill. And it is surely Vince Gill. Was he playing with the Eagles? He comes out and he sings a few songs. No way. Yeah, because right. Glenn Fry died last year, maybe, or the year before. So they, they need a Glenn Fry, uh, <laughs> which is... Gives Vince a call. Some fairly big shoes to fill. Anyway, Glenn's son comes out and sings some tunes, and wow. Vince Gill comes out and sings some tunes, and it is a really beautiful thing. Sorry, uh, little Vince Gill tangent. I love Vince Gill. Right. So, you know, for, like for me, he just has that... He's such an authentic... Telly tone when we he plays. Sh we should mention Brad Paisley as well. well oh, but we? I was just about in to in get the same to Brad breath. Well, just sorry, about, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, but because I hadn't heard Brad Paisley until much later. Yeah. And he is just, he's fire on a Telecaster, but it's still in that country thing. Yeah. But for me, again, the bridge pickup on a, like a Blackguard Telecaster, um, a little bit of. Dynacomp on that, and, uh, and I stick a little bit of the reverb on that as well. Not a country player by any stretch, but that bit of Dynacomp, bit of reverb, and the bridge pickup. Yeah, it's just. It's hard to catch the front of the note with the Dynacomp, isn't it? it because really it's so is. slow. It really is. You get this kind of. Ooh, there yeah. you are. Yeah. Yeah. It is that. It is that is the sound of ages, though. And then, of course, um, what I loved about the the thing that Brad Paisley did with it was he then hammered it through a cooking vox, added a tube screamer here and there, and yeah. that's his mid focus the sound, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. And but it still has an, an off, that authentic country thing about it, the twang. Yeah, yeah. And like for me, for that country thing, you just it's that's what it is. You know, nice. it's, it's really hard to to get past that. <laughs> okay. Um I'm gonna talk about another whole school of guitar playing, which was the whole reason I started playing guitar. Something I hadn't done for a long time. E flat. <laughs> the Strat becomes a totally different guitar when you tune it to E flat. And of course, Hendrix had his fair share of E flat and below E moments, but it was probably brought most to the fore by Stevie Ray mm. in the throughout the 80s. Um, I'm going to attempt not to play too much like Stevie Ray Vaughan. I used to do it, and it used to be my thing that I did, but. As you, get, is your thing. as you get older, it gets harder. But anyway, um, let's let me let me start on a guitar that isn't tuned to E flat. I'll go on the neck pickup, and here's uh, this 1961 Strat neck pickup in standard tuning. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wow. It is a completely different animal. Yeah. And where it starts to get really different is where you start stepping on some gain. So we'll do that. Might even get into some first territory, but I'll go... The, at the moment, what you're hearing is the Max on OD9 um, set. I don't know well, you can see how it's set, but for those of you listening to the podcast, the volume is kind of round to about two o'clock, where all pedals should be set. The tone is at about two o'clock, where all pedals should be set. And the gain is about 10 o'clock. Now, plenty of That's people... Legs akimbo. Yes, plenty of people would go even more than that and choose this as their ideal tube screamer settings. So uh, nine o'clock and three o'clock. Okay. Bad Bob Booster after it. Even when you go back onto the bridge pickup. Right. <laughs> Is a completely different thing to standard E, right? Because pretty much any strat, in my experience, you 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 just go a half step down on all the strings to E flat, and all of a sudden, all the frequencies, everything changes the way the whole guitar resonates, right? And it just becomes this dark, brooding, angry instrument, and I love it. You know, think about. I really mustn't play too much of this. That's amazing. It, it doesn't sound like that if it's not. I'm not sure uh, that particular track was all the way to E flat, but it definitely is not standard. Right. Different thing. E flat. Love it. This reminds me. We should do. I should do more of it because it is a completely different sound. That's very special. That's very special. Nice. Very good. You got okay. one more for me then, Dan? I got one more. Okay, so this is my 1965 telly. Um, and the, so the last thing I'm going to talk about is, like from the moment I was playing tellies, it's the one guitar that I could turn up to any gig at any session and not feel like I was compromising. Yep. Um, you know, if we were doing, you know, like a, like a, you know, like a heavy rock thing, okay? So.
Now, so that's 1965 bridge pickup Telecaster, right? Same, like I'm not going to change anything else. Actually, I'll leave I'll leave the same pedals on even. So, th so that's the thing for me. It's all there. Obviously, I love that top end, that clarity, that 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 attack, um, because there's so much information there. And even though it's a harder sound to play, because mm. you've got to be on it, and that's what I struggle with. And I think because I recognise that as one of my deficiencies, I think okay, because I. I hear it so clearly, and so it keeps me, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. keeps me sort of in line. Yeah. Um, but you know, the the reason that it is the, you know, my my first instrument that I always go to is because there's there's nothing basically I can't get out of this thing. Yeah, yeah. And for those of you maybe not watching or following on screen, if you listen to the podcast or whatever, Dan in the really heavy bit had exactly the same gain pedals turned on that he did for that really lovely quiet bit. The only thing he did was turn the delay on for the for the quiet bit. Um, and then back to full out. All he did was turn the guitar up to go back to the to the massive sound. Yeah. All that dynamic coming from just from the guitar. Just from the guitar. Yeah. So I mean that that's one thing I love about single coils in general. It, yeah. Their 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 range, their dynamic ranges. And really, unreal. really brilliant vintage style humbuckers can do it too, but I don't think anything does it quite as well as a, a vintage style uh, Fender style single coil, or indeed a really nice P90 can do it too. But then they start they start to tend to compress at the top end. Yeah, Whereas, and, that, and that those that mid range that they have sort of built into that sound. This for me is a more full frequency thing, you know. Yeah. It's, and from guitar to guitar, different variations. Yeah. But, you know, the, I just think the balance between these two pickups for me is perfect. Um, the the frequency range is perfect. The dynamic range for me is mm -hmm. great. And it's just, you know, and it all comes from the fact that it's just these simple two bits of wood. Two bits of wood. Slab together, yeah. you know. That first came along in 1950, for anyone who doesn't know that. I, I mean, that is astonishing. Go and look at a car from 1950 or a, God forbid, a computer <laughs> or an aeroplane or anything else from 1950 outside of the musical instruments world. There's not much that's, yeah, that's but, still absolutely off the top of its game mm. in terms of professional usage. There's still no player alive that can get everything out of one of those. No, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, all hail the telly. Well, I kind of agree with Dan, actually, on that. Um, there are days when I think if I could only have one guitar, it would be a telly, but I'm not allowed to play one. No. <laughs> so, all right, my last thing is... Let's go back to the oldie, seeing as you've done the oldie. Um, Strats were made for fuzz. Or, given the chronology of it, maybe fuzzes were made for strats. But it doesn't matter what fuzz you're talking about. The strat, fuzz, it's the sound mm. for me. Mm -hmm. So we've got the Vemuran Myriad fuzz here, which is the Josh Smith signature fuzz. I'm just going to have a blast and uh, maybe explain a little bit about why I think strats were made for fuzz. <laughs> Thank you. 
become the party trick on TPS and, we, and I've done that many times before to a greater or letter, lesser um, effect but a decent bridge or any strap pickup off the volume knob, decent fuzz, cleans up really nice. The level of expression there in terms of dynamic range is somewhat akin to what you were talking about yeah, yeah. with the telly. Yeah. Because I don't think the strap ever quite gets to that full rocking bridge pickup beautiful classic rock thing that the telly does it doesn't do that no but i do think what it does better is, is fuzz the fuzz yeah. thing with the frequencies are made for that yeah whereas you're... this gets a bit messy yeah because it's got you know extended bottom end it's almost too much for the yeah whereas the the the, the fuzz and the volume and everything is what brings a strat alive and then st standing on a tube screamer there if you are lucky enough to be able to play loud and goodness knows that is getting a rarer privilege for a lot of people mm. There is no guitar that will do fuzz, some sort of boost after it, cranked amp with the kind of clarity separation that a Strat will. And I love it for that. And you, very, very you don't need me to tell you that. You can go and listen to Jimmy or Philip Sace or Doyle Bramall or, I don't know, all those other players that have done that down the years. Kenny mm. Shepard's a good example mm. of the fuzz, the Strat, the cranking loud amp and that. You know, come the day, Dan, that's what I'll remember about guitar tone. Awesome. <laughs> that was brilliant. Yeah, exciting. Yeah. Um, so we have a live VCQ on Monday. Please join us and let us know what you think. Yeah. Be really interested to see. Strat or Telly, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, Brilliant. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Also, massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Uh, Anderton's Music of Guildford in Surrey. And our dear friends in Australia... Paddle Empire of Brisbane in Queensland. Yes, and there are links. Below. There are. I'm not sure you can... Uh, you might be able to buy some of this stuff, actually. Um, from Sweetwater in the US, a uh, brilliant online retailer there. And if you buy stuff from them via our links, Dan and I become so fabulously wealthy, we don't know what to do. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. some of the above is true. Uh, also, <laughs> thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed T-shirt or strings and hats and pedals and just joy yes and, there's probably time form. by the time this goes out there may well be time uh to still buy something for the holiday season or indeed after the holiday season yeah there's a whole weird week in between like christmas and new year where no one knows what to do it's a great time to buy merch <laughs> perfect a massive thank you to our patrons on patreon as <laughs> thank well thank you yeah cheers guys have a fantastic week we'll see you on monday bye, bye.